Here, I am delighted to introduce to you His Excellency Ignatius Jonan, former Minister of Energy and Mineral Resources and former Minister of Transportation, Indonesia. He serves these important positions under the current Joko Widodo's administration. His Excellency Jonan, uh, we are looking forward to hearing your remarks. Thank you. Honorables, Excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. It is challenging for me to express my uh, keynote speech because uh, the first four speeches have been made perfectly, so I don't know what to say and to add something here. But uh, let me share uh, my uh, view uh, without taking sight uh, at the moment, uh, either in the war in Ukraine or climate change and so on. But uh, uh, I grew up in the banking sector, so I was with City as director a quarter century ago. I told uh, Honorable William Heck that uh, I used to be a banker when I was a boy. Then he said, oh, it should be quite uh, not long time ago. I said, no, no, it's a long time ago. It's a quarter century ago. So let me share uh, the reality of the economics here. The largest GDP by country, I would like to say, is a, in the nominal, is still the US. It's about 25 trillion US dollar last year. It's big. It is about the five times that of Japan in 2022. But China has reached 18 trillion dollars last year. By PPP, it was close to $30 trillion in China. It is big. It's almost four times that of Japan. When I was a banker posted in many countries in Asia, I never learned that China can be at least three times that of uh, Japan's uh, economic power. But it is what it is now. That is one. Second, India. Uh, recently, uh, many uh, newspapers announced that India has reached close to 3.5 trillion US dollar GDP, its nominal GDP, or equivalent to 11 trillion dollars on the PPP basis. It is, even though in the nominal, it is exceeding the UK. I don't think. Honorable William Heck ever thought about it when he was in the office, that one day India could overtake the size of the GDP of the UK. So that's the reality. Well, uh, Germany still perform at the 4.5 trillion US dollar, Russia 2.1. My country, a little bit small, 1.2 trillion. But it's still OK. So uh, in reality, economic power is economic power. So business is business, economy is economy, and people must make their own living. I share the same view that uh, Honorable Mary Robinson and Honorable William Heck and Excellency Kawakuchi that we must talk to each other. We should not try to separate and make the argument on the differences. This is my, my personal view by without taking side. Second issue is that, uh, as the previous speaker said, that uh, internet and the free, free flow information now have been reshaping the world. For people in the generation of my daughters, who are now in the late 20s and early 30s, they spend much more time by reading the internet and the social media. 
None of them, none of my kids are uh, addicted to televisions. I still do, my wife still do, but uh, not my, my daughter's generation. So they believe on the tablets, they believe on the computer, on, the, on their laptops and their gadgets and their smartphones and so on, based on the free flow of the information that the world has been uh, following for the past maybe 10 years, 20 years, and so on. So that means it is very hard for us to have uh, the so-called, what Bill Hicks said, is a hypocrisy or double standard of any global policies that we are implementing at the moment. So having said that, I would like to uh, make some suggestion here. First of all, try to bring the Global South and uh, some other uh, significant developing countries, either in the Sub-Sahara Africa or the Northern Africa and Middle East and so on, in the Southeast Asia, to sit down and find the common interest. This is my view. And also try not to focus on the differences. Let me give you one example. For, country, for a country like Japan that has more than 90% not so uh, fragmented ethnicities, so I believe 90% of, the, of people who live in Japan uh, are from the single ethnic. But in Indonesia, we have 800 ethnicities. So the way we value the freedom might differ. This one. Well, you, you may say that uh, Indonesia has uh, like, uh, the Indonesia is still by religion is the largest Muslim country in the world. So it's, I think it's close to 200 million Muslims in the country, but 800 ethnicities. So if we implement the same value of freedom from Japan to Indonesia, I think the social fabrics may also react differently. So that's why I keep uh, telling Kudo-san that uh, the value of freedom should not be argumented or should not be debated from one region to another, from one culture to another. So that's different. So Bill Heck make uh, six suggestions. I also try to make six as much as I can. First, I have mentioned that uh, please find common interests and do not focus on the differences, especially on the, va on the value of the freedom. Well, I, I still support the value of, or the principle of the rule of laws and the human rights and so on. Second is that uh, the democratic states need to realize that the interconnected world are meant to be more responsible beyond their domestic interest. Why I'm saying this, I understand that uh, recently, or the past 10, 20 years, populistic leaderships are quite common in many parts of the world, even in the advanced country, even in the G7 countries as well. So, but we have to be responsible globally. So do not depend or do not rely just on the domestic interest. Now, number three, fair dialogue and understanding are extremely needed, even for the advanced countries and the emerging markets. I would like to say emerging markets rather than the global south. So it's very difficult whether Russia is south or north or something. So that's number three. Number four, the policy of making such aids or donors like in the past, like uh, when I was a boy, may not be sufficient these days. So people in the younger generation, the Y generation, the C generation, 
might value differently. Building similar interests and developing fair prosperity should be at the forefront. Number five, well, I understand that uh, all of you should agree that uh, we are living in one planet, one home. So there is no such other planet that we can migrate. Uh, not in my lifetime, I believe. And not in many of you lifetime. So the interests of mankind should be in the fair responsibility to the common global issues. These days, I would like to say two things. One, the climate change issues. Second is the, the peace issues. So my last one is that uh, if uh, the G7 members would like to make a leadership these days and still among the G20 and the rest of the world, please make a leadership by example. So it is very hard for many countries or for many inhabitants in the global south or in the emerging markets to understand that uh, while the G7 making this kind of policy and also at the same time doing different things in many parts of the region. Thank you very much. His Excellency Jonas, thank you very much for your view and our responsibilities. Now, uh, uh, I'm sorry to inform that uh, Dr. S. Jashankar, Minister of External Affairs, India, uh, who was uh, scheduled to join us virtually, but uh, due to his uh, very tight schedule in service foreign minister in G20 and, uh, presidency, he is no longer be able to join us today. So now uh, I'd like to move on to the panel discussion, the next session.